Uh, let's speak with Niall Hignett, who's student at a uh, student of law at Durham University. Niall, good afternoon to you. Um, so you you weren't at the protest, but you organised the protest. Is that right? No, sorry, I was at the protest and I organised the protest today. All right, um, okay. I so, wasn't at the formal dinner. I think is right. Okay, got got it. So, um, just, well, just tell us a little bit about it then, because it's good to get all sides of this. Why did you organise a protest? Was it specifically about Rod Little or a wider issue about the kind of speakers that you might encounter? No, so I think it's a really helpful narrative. Some people are trying to kind of wedge here that this is a freedom of speech issue and that this is all about whether or not we should be allowed to have controversial speakers in the university. And that's not it at all. This wasn't just, you know, a formal where somebody was invited to speak. It was a Christmas formal. The idea of these being that people are kind of merry, they're jolly. They don't want racism and bigotry over their roast dinner. And they weren't told Rod Little was going to be there. Now, of course, if Rod Little wants to project his views, so be it. I mean, they're unfortunate, but he can do that. What the university doesn't know him is a platform to, shed, to kind of spread his kind of vile rhetoric. And they absolutely should not spring that on students. And now the most important issue here is Tim Lutkus' conduct. As you saw Dorothy shouting that word at people after the event, um, it wasn't just that. Uh, Tim called people prophetic and he told people they don't belong at university. And this ties into kind of a wider issue of higher ups at universities and wider society. Kind of one rule for Lee and not for me. I've, you've just seen Boris Johnson's kind of Christmas party. It is the exact same entitlement mm. to break the rules and act with impunity that we're addressing. But isn't uh, it's sorry, and I'll just to interject on that point. Isn't isn't Tim Luckhurst's point, broadly paraphrasing his his kind of core beliefs? Um, and we should declare that I think, well, he's I don't know if he's a friend, but he's certainly a former colleague of Rod Little. So that it's important to put that out there. But. I mean, isn't his point that universities are full of debate and much of it will be uncomfortable? You might not agree with it. And if you can't get a, he a handle on that basic principle, then you're in the wrong place. I mean, intellectually, that's a fairly sound philosophy, right? Well, look, I mean, it's, but there's controversial views and then there's racism, homophobia, transphobia and classism. And, you know, you can have this kind of idea about academic freedom rod liddell is not an academic he is a clickbait mouthpiece and just well, you say click, he's been well that, at it. he's been at it way before clickbait was a thing in fairness i mean well i mean writing about paedophilia in 2003 i would guess was to provoke reaction you know he's a reactionary and the same thing he's a he's a polemicist I mean, it's a genre you know of journalism well, he writes I mean, tabloid he, he writes he, broadsheet and you know he, he write, well, writes within a genre and that will upset some people and the last time i looked that's okay isn't it I mean, that is OK. He can upset people. But again, this isn't actually the issue here. The issue is the context of which this happened. Nobody knew Rodolin was going to be there. People have a right to choose who they listen to. If you have a freedom of speech, you don't have freedom to a platform. You don't have the right to be listened to by an audience. Rod Liddell was not announced as a speaker. The students had the right to leave. And again, the main issue here isn't about freedom of speech. This is some culture wars nonsense that is trying to be pushed that this was about Rod Liddell's freedom of speech. It's not about that. But you've it's kind of just made it about that because you've, you've described some of the things that he talks about, um, you know, the, about race. Yeah, I disagree and... with his views. OK. And I, I don't know whether, I mean, if I were to say to you, can you give me a Rod Little racist view? I don't know whether you would be able to do that. I mean, I see him, uh, I see him agitate areas around BLM and similar related issues. And um, I, I don't think that's illegal to do that. If it was racist, it would be. And he'd probably be in a sitting in a prison cell now. Look, I mean, I'm really not going to be drawn into this freedom of speech debate because that is not what this is about at all. It's about misconduct. It's about Tim Lutkus' misconduct and it's about safeguarding. Because, it, I mean, how many, let's be honest here now, how many of the students in that room even have heard of Rod Little? Exactly. Well, they hadn't until they Googled him. And when you kind of look into him, that's when you see... And then they were outraged. They, so you can't, I mean, it's irredeemable, the, the free they speech. Right, they have a right to be outraged and they have a right not to listen to him. That is, that's that's absolutely really true. That's absolutely true. But you kind of wonder why at a, at a, a place of learning at a, a good university like Durham, people, wouldn't the instinctive reaction be, do you know what? I mean, this, and I, I've watched people... Uh, deliver speeches from all persuasions, some nefarious people, some uh, horror stories. And I always find that more interesting almost than those that I agree with. That's fair. 
again, this is this is kind of a wedge to try and create a freedom of speech. No, I'm not trying again. to create that's that, but I think it's I, I no, think it's not, intrinsically not, linked, about, Niall. Oh, I don't think you the, can. The, the protest today was primarily about Tim Rutgers misconduct. They aren't actually as insolent as you may believe. The content warnings. They aren't even asking for people like Rod Little to be banned from university. Asking for content warnings is just saying, tell us he's going to be there. There were students in tears. I know that Tim Lockhurst thinks that words don't hurt, but words actually do hurt, especially when you're a minority being persecuted, most while you're trying to enjoy yourself with friends at a Christmas dinner. I mean, it's absolutely absurd to try and make this about free speech. It's not about but free you're, speech. But you're kind it's of, do, even technology. in what you just said, a minority being persecuted. Who persecuted a minority here? Who per Again, you're trying to drag me into the actual... No, you said they, they're your speech, words, Niall. Well, you they you just being, cited yeah. that as an example. I was interested to what that to know what that meant. Okay, so for example, he said that uh, children of single mothers should be taken off their parents. It, this, that's a paraphrase. I believe it was more yeah. to do with kind of... Um, he said something along the lines of the current system is too friendly to the mental health of um, the mothers. Um, he said he went on a rant about colonialism and said that colonialism wasn't the main cause of African woes. Yeah. Now, again, nonsensical view for a start, but even then, it was only there to provoke. It was provocative. But he might have it's, views that, that go against those that you again, have or I have. have. The, again, he can have those views. He's fine to hold those views and he's fine to yeah. speak them. He's not fine to speak to them at a Christmas formal where it wasn't announced he was going to be there. Who and was again, announced? The so it, do they just say there's a guest speaker announced. coming? Is that how it works? They usually, and again, this speaks to Tim Rutgers' misconduct, usually we have advance notice of these kind of things. They say yeah. who the speaker's going to be, and everybody goes, okay, well, I'll choose to listen to them, I'll choose not to. This time, we weren't told there was going to be a guest speaker. Mm. Um, and in the communication that I've seen, um, these are organized by the junior common room, the JCR. Um, the communication that Tim Rutgers sent to them about this, he used Rod. Usually you have a full name and more detail uh, on the seating plan and on the email sent prior. So you're kind of uh, alleging that uh, was a, Tim was knew, that, Tim knew that it would be students. controversial. Uh, Absolutely. But, he but said you, that could, himself. you could still come back to the same point that it doesn't really matter, does it? A bloke's going to speak for 30 minutes. Who cares? You know, carry on drinking your wine and disagree with him. Don't listen to him. Move on. What, what does it Not matter? When... No, because he was making transphobic remarks when trans students were sat at the top table. He was making classist remarks when there were working class students in the room. Classist he said, he, well, What he does that even his, mean? He opened his speech. It, so he was, it sounds like he's upset everybody at some point. So. Again, yeah, this, I know that you're trying to drag me into the I'm not, I'm, I promise you not, I'm genuinely not, I'm only responding. If this is about culture wars, but this just isn't the case, it's no, about misconduct. No, but you you are making those comments and I'm just responding to you. I'm not raising them. You, you've given me specific examples yeah. and, uh, and and my point is to follow that up, surely. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, no, I promise but... you, I'm not here to try and create any war. I'm intrigued by people being silenced for what whatever reason and I'm wondering why it wasn't easier just to sort of suck it up and go do you know what here's a speaker he's a bit controversial by some people's standards spot on by other people's standards but either way let's just let the guy speak and ignore him if we disagree with him I think that's probably well, Luckhurst's point isn't it my point isn't about what he said it's about the harm it caused and it's about the fact that it's not whether or not he can say it, it's whether or not he has a right to say it or students are forced to listen to him when they were told he was going to be there and again, the protest today, most of the focus here isn't on Rob Little, it's on Tim Lockhurst. Okay. It's Tim Lockhurst's misconduct. It's what Tim Lockhurst said to students, the way he treated us, about this kind of system here where higher-ups believe that they can do whatever they want, act with impunity, maybe maybe, maybe he didn't think students. yeah maybe he didn't think it was an issue so are you now s saying that his livelihood must be removed as a result of your disagreement with him Please, i mean look this isn't our college community we are we are a community here that's how Durham set up as colleges we deserve to have a principal who is also involved in pastoral care kind of support who kind of cares for us tim Lockhurst, cares for you it's not he, yeah, absolutely. It's pastoral. It's not a yeah, social. No, he's he, not a social worker, mate, is he? Come on, he's, he's the no, principal. He, no, actually, he is. No, no, no. Durham set up is colleges. Those colleges are in charge of welfare. That that I, is, I, is I, that I, straightforward. I, he's the head of welfare at our college. But not just that. It's it's not just about that. The idea that Tim Lockhurst. I mean, you people use the word cancelled. Tim Lockhurst is very. I don't. Well but I take your point. Because... I know that you didn't. It, not you personally. You know that others do. And Tim Lockhurst is a very well connected individual. 
if he loses this job, he's not going to be, you know, out in the wilderness. So you're OK. But, but it's the principle, isn't it? That your disagreement with him, no matter how, you know, I, I don't dispute how it's strongly not... you feel about it and how justified you sense you are. But the idea that what we do in these situations is remove somebody from their job based on I mean, the next set of students at Durham might fundamentally agree with Tim Luckhurst. Well, what does that mean? Do we rehire him at that point? There's, there's no way to disagree with misconduct. That's not, that's not, a, that isn't even. But is it, is it, mis I mean, is this not a little, I know you're a law student, but is this not tenuous? I mean, <laughs> that not he's really. somehow he's... broken his uh, terms of employment almost is what you're saying. Well, Durham University are currently investigating, obviously. I can't comment on that investigation. However, I believe that he definitely did break his terms of employment. You can't stand and call students pathetic. You cannot. You can, though, Niall. Don't you know, you really can, can't you? No, you, you... can't. Not, not, in the current, not in the context of this university in the way that we're set up as kind of this, like, pastoral community. But some might pastoral right? community. Some might say, well, that's all that's wrong with flipping university at the moment. Yes, of course you want people to be cared, you know, to be safe. I mean, but, you know, the idea is some hurt. Well, you may words want minorities kind of, like, harassed on the regular, but that's not... But who's, really who's harassing... Who's harassing I mean, anybody? Who's harass I mean, did you not the videos of Tim Lockhurst and Dorothy kind of shouting at students? It's this level of contempt. Well, it looked like it looked like he was having an altercation with somebody, and they were kind of shouting at each other. To me, I get, Tim's supposed to be the principal here. He's supposed and to his be wife's not the and principal. We should have. Yes, but she's an extension of him as a guest speaker, not as his wife, but as one of his guests. In the same way that he would be. Yeah, responsible I, you, for you wouldn't get that words. through an employment tribunal, though, would you? You certainly wouldn't get that through employment tribunal but that's something that you know okay. he should certainly apologize for and review you don't have that kind of conduct in university i mean you you played the video i think your viewers can see that that is absolutely just abhorrent behavior and well no, i thought i thought she i thought she looked a bit daft i mean i'm not really bothered whether it's abhorrent. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it sounded it looked like she'd kind of slightly lost the plot if i'm honest <laughs> but i i didn't think anybody would be offended by that would they well, if somebody's shouting kind of that word at you, but that's not all she said. That's all that was caught on camera. OK, fair um, enough. Well, she, I, asked, I get that. she asked, so for example, she asked a gay student whether he uses his the word she used. Um, that's homophobic. <laughs> she spewed homophobia. Well, I, I have no wrong. I have no context have, to respond to that. And, and she's not however, here to either. Just tell me on, on a completely separate point, Niall, let, let's leave as friends and on a you know lighter note. Who would be your ideal speaker? My ideal speaker. Who would you like um, to see for 45 minutes at the Christmas formal in Durham next year? Well, look, hopefully it's... Um, I don't think there are ideal speakers. I don't think that there's anybody who's right or wrong. I just think that there are speakers who cause harm intentionally, and I think there's those that don't. And I think that the ones that cause harm can speak wherever they like, but they need to be told, students need to be told in advance if that's going to happen. And there should be no intentional, malicious provo like provocation of students just for this kind of odd culture wars game that some people seem to be playing.